Begin the reassembly process by placing the oil guide in its recess. Make sure you fit the two tabs into the oil groove. Next, install the output shaft front bearing race with the thickest side facing down. Use the tapered bearing driver and handle to drive the race home. Using the seal driver, install the input shaft seal. Make sure the copper ring on the seal is facing up when you install it. Put a little grease in the seal grooves and tap the seal in place with the driver and a hammer. Next, put a little grease in the control shaft seal and install it using the input shaft bearing driver and a hammer. Install the control shaft dust boot by slipping it around the lip on the seal you just installed. Time to install the control shaft assembly. Follow these next steps to ensure it is assembled correctly. First, make sure the interlock assembly is assembled as follows. The pin on the control finger should be pointing towards the center of the case. Place the interlock assembly in the clutch housing and slide the control shaft in far enough to hold the interlock assembly in place and protrude past it about one half of an inch. Next comes the stopper plate. Make sure to install it as shown. Slide it over the end of the control shaft and over the interlock control finger pin. Last is the spring. Install it with the tag wire that is at a right angle to the spring towards the interlock assembly. Slide the control shaft in the rest of the way. The control shaft assembly pin is tapered and has a notch cut along the side short of one end. That end is inserted into the hole in the control finger. Drive the pin in using a pin punch and a hammer. It will stick up about a millimeter when properly installed. Finish installing the interlock spring by rotating the tag wire on the interlock assembly side up to the control finger pin and position the other tag end on top of the stopper plate as shown. To install the interlock assembly bolt and sealing washer, stand with the clutch housing on its side, align the slot on the back of the interlock plate with the hole in the case, and screw in the bolt. Torque the bolt to 11 to 15 foot-pounds. Next, insert the magnet in the bottom of the clutch housing. Now install the differential assembly. Hold it by the bearing and an edge and set it in as shown. Tap it in with a hammer handle. Next, you'll be installing the assembled input and output shafts. As with the disassembly procedure, you have to wiggle and rotate everything to get the output shaft bearing past the Install the input shaft from the front bearing retainer next. 
put some 3-bond 1303 adhesive on the tapered torque screw and screw it and the bolt closest to the interlock assembly in by hand. Temporarily screw the reverse shift fork assembly bolts in a couple of threads to properly line up the plate before torquing the other bolt and the Torx screw. Torque the bolt closest to the interlock assembly and the Torx screw to 11 to 15 foot-pounds. Remove the reverse shift fork plate screws. Now you'll be installing the shift rails and forks. Begin with the 1-2 rail and fork assembly. Next, install the 3-4 rail and fork assembly and the reverse fifth rail as a unit. You'll have to reposition the control shaft from time to time to get everything in place. The shift fork roll pins get installed next. Start with the 1-2 fork and line up the holes with a 3 16 inch pin punch. Insert the roll pin into the hole and drive it in far enough to go into the rail. Finish installing it with the punch. Perform the same procedure to the 3-4 fork roll pin. Install the reverse shift fork assembly and torque the bolts to 11 to 15 foot-pounds. Install the reverse idler gear with the shift fork groove facing down. Slide the shaft down through the gear and into the clutch housing. Next, install the oil guide into the center case. Make sure all of the oil holes are clean of any foreign material. Install the tip of the guide into the rectangular hole in the bottom of the case and clip the other end of the guide into the cast-in receiver as shown. Next, you'll be installing the center case. Begin by applying a thin film of ultra-gray sealant to the clutch housing or center case mating surface. Do not ooze the sealant directly onto the case. Instead, apply a little to your finger and spread a thin, uniform film onto the mating surface. Before installing the center case, there are a couple of things you must do. First, make sure the bolt hole in the reverse idler gear shaft is lined up as illustrated. Next, put a little grease in the center case differential bearing hole and install the correct thickness shim into the case. Now you can slide the center case over the shift rails and shafts.
tap it in place with a hammer handle. Install all of the case bolts, hand start them all, and using a low setting, screw them in place with the pneumatic tool. Following the sequence in the overhaul workbook, torque the bolts to 26 to 31 foot-pounds. Align the reverse idler gear shaft with the hole in the case using an awl and install the bolt and new sealing washer. Install any detent balls, springs, and caps that are present on your transaxle. Put a little sealant on the cap threads before screwing them in place. Put some of the sealant on the reverse light switch and install it. Set the fifth gear bearing over the race and install the fifth gear and synchro assembly. Install the fifth reverse hub with the broad face facing down. Line up the recesses in the fifth gear synchro with the keys in the hub and drop the hub in place. Next, you'll be installing the output shaft fifth gear. The side without the lip faces down. Screw the output shaft nut on until it's finger tight. Set the reverse synchro into the hub. The slots in the synchro line up with the keys in the hub. Next, set the reverse braking cone and washer into the reverse synchro. Screw the nut under the input shaft finger tight. Now you'll be installing the fifth reverse slider and shift fork. The side on the slider with the chamfer faces down. Also, the splines inside the slider with the gaps on either side and in the middle of the spline fit over the keys in the hub. Slide the fork into the slot in the slider and slip the assembly onto the reverse fifth shift rail. With the aid of an awl, depress the keys in while pushing down on the fork and slider. Maintain a slight pressure until the slider is slipped over all of the keys. It may require some fiddling with the keys to get the slider to drop all the way into place. Temporarily slip your 3 16 inch pin punch into the reverse fifth shift fork and rail. Now you want to ensure that you have all of your gears. Test for first and second gears. Third and fourth gears.
reverse and fifth gears. Now you're going to shift the transaxle into third gear and remove the punch. Using a brass hammer, lightly tap on the reverse fifth shift fork until fifth gear is engaged. Now you can go ahead and torque the input and output shaft nuts to 102 to 115 foot-pounds. Don't forget to stake the input and output shafts with your punch. The input shaft nut gets staked in two places. Slide the reverse shift fork into neutral and install the roll pin the same way you installed the other two. Now put a thin uniform layer of sealant onto the end cover mating surface. Line up the slot in the reverse braking cone with this center case bolt hole. Now you can set the end cover in place and install the bolts. Torque the bolts to 11 to 15 foot-pounds. Put some grease on the lips of the left differential seal and install it using the seal driver and handle. Turn the transaxle on its side and install the right differential seal. Apply some grease to the clutch release fork pivot point and the throw out bearing fingers. Apply some of the grease to the throw out bearing also. Now you can install the release fork and throw out bearing into the clutch housing. Flip the transaxle over and install the shift control cable bracket and shoe. Finish the assembly by applying some grease to the speedometer driven gear housing and install it. Rotate it back and forth as you press in on the housing. Double check that you have all of your gears and that the interlock is working correctly. After you shift into fifth gear, you should not be able to select reverse until you slide the control shaft in and then back out again. Here is a cutaway view to illustrate how the interlock mechanism works. When fifth gear is selected, the protruding arm on the stopper plate slides over and on top of the boss cast into the clutch housing, locking out reverse gear.
The only internal differences, other than gear and bearing sizes, in the M5BF2 transaxle are the input shaft front bearing retainer plate has three tapered Torx screws, and the differential is carried on tapered roller bearing instead of ball bearings. As you can see, the rest of the transaxle interior has the same layout as the M5AF3.